Hello everyone, the Army of Light Earth Division, the boots on the ground. It's Shauna L. Francis and today is August 15th, 2023. So glad you guys are here. Welcome, welcome to this week's weekly briefing. Again, welcome to all the new subscribers. I'm so glad that you found us. I'm so glad that you're here. There's so much to catch up on. I've got tons of videos, lots of fun stuff to um, discover in terms of the negative reptilian influence here on the planet, the ascension that we're currently going through, and all the chaos, confusion, uh, craziness that goes along with an ascension, especially at the early phases like we're in right now. So if your life is feeling a bit nuts and upside down and you don't know which way is up, there's really good reasons for that. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad that you're here. Um, we're, we're in this together. We're in it to win it. And we're giving it everything we've got in terms of not being afraid, not being in fear, living our most authentic, true selves, the lives that we are meant to live here, the lessons, all the karma, all the experiences, all the highs and lows, and all the emotions that come with this incredible opportunity to be on the planet right now in human form, during this ascension as a light worker, amazing. You know, I marvel at this. I marvel at this opportunity for us to really do something incredible in terms of the entirety of our soul's journey, help with the planet's ascension. And if you are here and if you are watching these messages and you are drawn to these frequencies, you're in the right place. You're a light worker, a star seed. You're here to be a way shower, a beacon and to just anchor as much light and love as possible here onto this planet when it needs it, when it, needs it the most, it's now. So like I said, um, what we're doing is important. I'm glad that you're here. Thanks everybody for your lovely comments, for your new subscriptions, for your emails, for reaching out for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Thanks to everybody who is purchasing merchandise from our store, our Army of Light store, armyoflight.store. Um, it's uh, just it's just been such a fun journey. Um, I've started this book with Melchizedek. <laughs> um, I have six days under my belt. I did take Saturday off, but I do have a beautiful friend here from Texas visiting Portland for the first time. So we've been pretty busy running around. It's also been over 100 degrees here for the last couple of days. The doors open. It's been over. It's and I don't have air conditioning and it's been hot. <laughs> so we're we're melting. But tomorrow we go to the Oregon coast where it's gonna be like 68, 70 degrees. I mean, it's a 30 degree difference uh, between here and the coast, which is an hour and a half away. So we'll spend a couple of nights there and uh, just cool off and enjoy the Pacific Ocean. So anyway, having a lovely time. Um, this book, you know, it's, awesome. It's such an honor. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> you know, um, it kind of reminds me of sometimes the cadence with Queen Elizabeth where, you know, I'm really wanting to get every word right. There's some pauses, you know, um, I may channel for 20 minutes, but it takes 40 minutes to get through all that. Um, so they're taking it slow and, you know, and they realize that I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to really to do them a solid here and to make sure that everything is 100% accurate. Um, and getting up at the crack of dawn, it's, you know, I'm trying to get used to that. Um, this will be a late night. Um, I do the best I can. I get up when I can and um, just get, I get started as early as I can. And we, you know, it's a couple of days we've gone the full two hours, a couple of days, it's only been an hour. Um, and sometimes it flows more easily than others, but you know, it's been successful so far, so good. So I want to um, actually would like to read to you some of the book that's come through um, that I thought was really nice and interesting. Um, but before I get into that, um, also I've been in the halls of Amenti a lot, like normal this week, cycling energy. Um, on back on the on August 11th, which was three four days ago, um, I sat down in the halls of Amenti to what I was expecting to just do some energy cycling as normal and a new group of beings came in and they've got a message for you and for me for all of us and i just was so touched by this so i'm going to start there i hope all of you are doing amazing um things are good here things are really good my son's doing well um we're just you know we're doing our thing 
All right, The Halls of Amenti, August 11th, 2023. So I go, I imagine a couple of big doors made out of jadeite of all things, like it's a light, a pale green color with these black onyx hand doorknobs. So I kind of do an official, just like when I used to um, interview members of the Galactic Federation of Light, I'd go down and I would, you know, it would be kind of a formal thing. And it's, it's same with the Halls of Amenti. I ask for permission to come in. They say, yes, we're ready for you. I picture the doors. I walk through the doors and I place myself inside the Halls of Amenti. Um, and in this time, I sat down kind of, you know, kind of like I kind of mimic whatever I'm doing. I'm sitting down on a couch. So there I'm sitting down on the floor, on a chair, on a couch. Um, and this time <laughs> I saw all these beings marching toward me in formation. And I couldn't really make out features, but they seemed fairly humanoid, but dark skin, like they're dark brown. Um, it's not the first time I've seen dark brown beings, but um, there was, I'm going to guess 500 of them or something. And so this is quite a spectacle as I'm sitting, you know, I'm expecting, you know, for just this energy to start flowing. And instead I'm getting this very clear vision. <laughs> I'm like, oh boy, what's all this about? So these beings kind of march closer and closer and closer in formation. And then they all basically sit like I'm sitting. So they all sit down and one being, one being comes forward and they asked if they could speak with me. And I said, certainly, you know, and I said, please let me acclimate to the energy here. I was just like, you know, getting bombarded by this higher vibrational energy with, with this, you know, huge contingency of these beings. Um, and I, <laughs> I said, I'd be so delighted to speak with you, please. Um, I said, how may I be of service? That's really just what I said. And they said, thank this person, this being said, thank you, Shauna. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I said, you're so very welcome. Thank you for coming forward. Um, and we took a, I don't know, a minute or so for the energies to kind of acclimate. Um, and then I, I went a little bit further and I was just imagining my energy melding with their energy fields, just kind of being in the same field, sharing the field. And remember team, the more I do this work, the more I'm understanding that the physicality of us is not near as important or as meaningful in as opposed to where our consciousness sits. Where's our consciousness at? This is really where we are at at any given moment. And maybe you can even consider it by locating. I'm in the halls of a mentee having this discussion, but I'm also here in this body here, you know, on planet Earth in my living room. Um, so it's just a... Uh, it's just a shift of perception, really, and it, it's just becoming quite fun. Um, okay. They said to me here, I said, please continue whenever you're ready. They said, Shauna, we are all from the planet Nibiru, and it is an honor to make your acquaintance. So Nibiru, I have heard this name before. I searched for it through my transcriptions for the last five years, trying to find it. I couldn't find it. But this name has come up, Nibiru, Nibiru, Nibiru. Um, and I, I've done a little bit of research here on what this planet is, and it's not what we have, not how it's described, at least according to this being or the Halls of Amenti guides, actually, it's not what we think it is. So Nibiru, they said. Um, I said, well, thank you so much. It's an honor to meet all of you. Um, thank you for being here. And they said, we bring good tidings. And we bring tremendous love and appreciation for what you and your con constituents are attempting to do on planet Earth. We understand that you have also suffered, suffered greatly in terms of your journey. And you've also lost friends who were with the Galactic Federation of Light fighting this galactic war with the negative reptilians and their contingencies, this being said. And, you know, he had kind of, I say he, it's, I'm not sure if it was a he or a they or a she or what. Um, and he kind of had like a, he was uh, exuberant in his voice. It was like an excited type, type voice. It was really cute. And they said, um, dear Shauna, we wish to bring you our condolences, but also to let you know that you have friends. Oh, and at that point, I just start bursting into tears. I'm feeling the words. I'm, I'm hearing them, but I'm feeling them more so. Shauna, you have friends. 
and they, they let me cry for 20 seconds or so and they said as we were saying Shawnee you have friends across the universe there are those of us who may be watching from the sidelines but we are sending our energy our unconditional love and our support for you and the Army of Light Earth Division. <laughs> I love this. Dear Shauna, we watch you, they said. We watch your videos. We help raise your frequencies and the frequencies of your community. We watch with such excitement and anticipation for what is to come and the freedom that humanity will soon be able to experience for the first time. We are elated, Shauna, at the prospect of your world free from tyranny. And they continued. We are overjoyed with the prospect that Earth and all of her inhabitants will experience the levels of love, the depths of unity that you are all capable of. Shauna, it's just so very exciting. Please consider us your family. We wanted you to experience us in this way as a large showing of force so that you may understand fully that you are never alone and you have friends in so many places and your support network is likely so much larger than you have even attempted to imagine, dear Shauna. I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you so very much. Thank you for all this. It's really touched my heart, as you can see. What an honor it is to meet all of you. I'm so excited to tell the Army of Light Earth Division all about you and to share your message. And they said, Oh, Shauna, that is wonderful. Believe me when I say that the pleasure and the honor is all ours. What a beautiful exchange to meet here in the halls of Amenti, where all our presence may be known by you, and also this heartfelt intent for our communications. I said, that's so beautiful. Thank you, team. Thank you so much. I said, could you tell me a little bit more about you, maybe your name or something about your race? And I'd like to know, how are you able to watch our videos? <laughs> I said, I'm sure it's not hard. But again, I want to just thank you for supporting us through all of this time as we maneuver this path. And they said, certainly, Shauna, it is truly our pleasure. We reside in the eighth density, and we as a whole take a keen interest in Earth, in humanity, and all of your affairs. We do not normally get too actively involved with any get given situation on the planet, but we do pay attention. There are members of our species who are a part of the Galactic Federation of Light, but mostly we are explorers. We focus on discovery. We like to observe new species and new planets, and we also like to pay close attention to the goings-on with the negative reptilians and their constituents. And they said here, this matchup between light and dark has far-reaching impacts to this sector of the, of the universe. There are areas and realms of existence that have been out of balance for a very long time. We align ourselves with the overall guiding objectives of the Galactic Federation of Light, whereby specific actions must be taken to bring existence back to a natural state of balance. Sorry for the background noise got my door open. And they said, Shauna, it is our wish that we leave you with a deep sense of knowing that you are supported and you are all so very loved by many species and many beings. Our energy supports you and all on the planet who are aligned to the light, who are seeking balance and who are unafraid to know the truth. We love every human regardless of their choice in this matter, but for the work, light workers, you can consider us a strong ally. I said, that's amazing. I said, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you to all of you who have shown up as our uh, allies. What an honor and thank you. I said, Shauna, it's our sincerest wishes that your path and the path of your entire community be filled with unending love, unending hope, and abundant joy as you make this passage. <laughs> we will take leave now. Said, Wonderful. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. So we took a quick, quick break, and um, I called in the Halls of Amenti guides because I wanted to clarify on this Nibiru idea. 
So if you get online and do a little bit of research, Nibiru is this ghost extra planet supposedly in our solar system that has a strange elliptical orbit around the sun, so we don't really see it. Um, planet X, they've called it some other things. But anyway, that's kind of what you would... And Nibiru was also... Well, I think it's... I'm, I'm not really sure. It's, it's come up before as... Um, something that could collide with the earth and destroy the earth. <clears throat> okay, but that never happened. I said, Halls of the Menti Guides, can you please just validate with me that I heard that correctly? Like, this is planet Nibiru that they were from? I said, does, you know, does this, where is this planet? And I said, thank you, team. They said, Sean and Nibiru, yes, in fact, it's a planet, but it's not the planet you think it is or that your scientists have said or have postulated that it is. Nibiru is not in your immediate solar system, dear one. This particular planet is many thousands of light years away from your solar system. I said, okay, thank you, team. I said, um, is there anything else you could say that will help me place this in the larger universe? And they said, Shauna, it's in the direction of the star Vega. Excuse me, and I had to look up Vega too, and it's a star in the Lyra star system. And it's one of the closer, brighter stars to us at 25 light years away, whereas Nibiru, they're saying, is thousands of light years away past that star. I said, thank you for that, team. I said, can you, say, can you please tell me how it is they're able to watch our videos? <laughs> um, being, you know, several thousands of light years away. That They said, Shauna? It's a similar technology as to how they were able to appear to you in the halls of Amenti, where you could see them, you could feel their energy field, and you could hear them. It's somewhat of a telepathic resonance and a tuning in. Once they know what they are looking for, it's not difficult for them to access that content or any content on Earth, particularly in digital form, they said. All right, so a little bit of that behind the scenes. I said, thank you, team, for that. Yeah, just another day here working in the halls of Amenti. All right. So that was really nice, team. And I and I know that and I know that we're fully loved and fully supported. And it does it does feel like a lonely path sometimes, um, even just for us here on the planet. And it it is comforting to know that we've got all these allies and all this support. And Mel Archangel Metatron from the very beginning has said, Shauna, you've got you know you and all of humanity have, have many eyes on all of you, like millions of beings watch what's going on on a regular basis here. We are under a bit of a microscope because this has never been attempted before. This ascension, ascending while still in our human forms, you know, with the use of some technology and some magic that they're going to do, you know, ascending to the fifth dimension without leaving our bodies. All right, and we understand here from Melchizedek, this is going to take some time. We are kind of, the, we're the original way showers here. We're one of the original waves coming through. I'd say us and folks from the last 40 years or so, you know, we're part of this push, um, this initial push. And we are paving the way for those who are going to follow in our footsteps. So this is, while it's just can be so disheartening to understand that we are still so far away from the actual ascension I mean, this is happening now. It seems far away to our little lives here when we only we have a very short lifespan here and we feel like we just kind of get started and then we're already off the planet. So our sense of time is nothing like kind of what everybody else is feeling. So for them, this is happening really quickly in a blink of an eye. For us, it feels like an eternity. <laughs> it feels like an eternity. Um, so anyway, I thought that was really cool, cool message, but um, you're not alone, team. And certainly, if you're feeling alone and you don't have anybody to talk to about this stuff or things that are going on in your world, please reach out to me. You can text, you can email me at shauna at shaunalfrancis.com. I also have a contact form through my website. Um, so please don't just sit there feeling like you've got nobody to talk to. I'll talk to you. We've got a beautiful community here. Log on and, you know, write some comments, introduce yourself. I also have a Facebook group called Starseed Lifestyle with Shauna L. Francis. And um, you can get on there and also meet new folks, share stories, share ideas. We have a lot in common, you know, across.
across across the miles across the continents here on this planet. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, Melchizedek and this book. So I'm just barely a week into this channeling of this book, The Crack of Dawn, every day. I took a day off. I took Saturday off, like I said. All right, so this is from the second day. And truth be told, it's the only transcription so far that I've been able to sit down with and actually clean up. You know, I record this into my phone. The app I use, I use gives a rough transcription, and then I have to clean all this up. So every time I make a video and I'm reading the transcription, I've gone through this process of cleanup with what was present, you know, what was given to me by this app. So I'm really behind. It's going to be a lot of work to go back and clean up all that stuff. But I, so I've got to catch up. But it'll it'll all it'll all get done. All right. Um, so here's kind of maybe first chapter. I don't have names yet for the chapters. And and we've gotten through the first chapter where they said. That's the end of the first chapter. Stop now, please. A lot of lot very similar to what they do with Paul Selig with his books. Um, and here they say, it is our intention to lay out the story, the information, and even the evidence in a calculated and methodical way as to give the reader and the listener ample opportunity to understand and assimilate the information and come to your own conclusions based on the information presented. So what we know here is there's going to be an audio book because they talk about the reader and the listener. So that's super exciting. Um, also, you know, the intention from what I'm get gathering for how they've set up the book so far, which has mainly been more introductory type stuff, um, is that th this is definitely meant for a wider audience. Remember, team, that we represent a collective here that we th who are aligned in frequency and in mission somehow with the Galactic Federation of Light or against the negative reptilians or aligned with the light in some way, shape, or form. We've said yes to this. We are helping to raise the consciousness of the planet through our collective in order to impact the larger collective at whole in, as a whole. So... We have a bit of a unique audience here, a fairly intimate audience comparatively to the rest of YouTube and what's going on. Um, but you know, this is going to be for a wider audience, and so they're laying a lot of groundwork here for for this. We're, we've talked about free will. We've talked about universal acceptance, non-judgment, no fear, um, and they're just doing a really beautiful job of kind of setting the stage. But I haven't yet gotten into the meat of the negative reptilian stuff, but it could be as early as tomorrow. I feel like we're getting really close. <clears throat> I'd also ask Melchizedek, I'm like, so is this going to be the part where all the, the personal attacks are coming and, you know, all the, all the stuff they talked about last summer, like, yeah, Shauna, you're going to be under personal attack for bringing this information forward. And they said, you better believe it. <laughs> You know, and, and they, they've mentioned here that there's going to be information that's not ever been, ever been shared before. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an important job here. It's a big deal. Um, we're ready. We're ready to do this. They said here, it's time for humanity to have a much deeper understanding of the forces at play here and why the human condition is widely to widely considered to be that of suffering and of strife. Know, dear ones, that this realm that you call home, this space in which you play, has been under the careful and consistent manipulation of nefarious and service to self species who like to fancy themselves as your owners and your keepers. Yeah. And they said here, just as a pet owner may put a delicate yellow canary in a cage, these nefarious species are doing something similar with humanity. The owner of the canary makes sure that the bird's basic needs are met with food and water, fresh air and shelter, but the canary is trapped. And having been in that cage for so long, it knows no different. It doesn't understand freedom as a concept because its consciousness has not been made aware of that concept. The bird exists in the cage to please the owner. 
And then Melchizedek went into this beautiful description of, you know, at some point this canary may get a, a chance at freedom. Somebody comes by and opens that door and that bird flies around and decides, I'm a little freaked out out here. I'm going to go back in where I know it's safe and they go back in the cage. Um, you know, and so they, they draw this parallel with us and they're saying that, you know, Melchizedek with this book and with this, these messages and this content, they're opening the door for humanity, for this possibility of raising a consciousness so that we may know freedom in a way that we've never known it before. So remember, guys, the idea here is that we help raise consciousness literally by knowing and learning about the things that have been dark and hidden from us for very, so very long. And, and now's the time. We're ready now for these things to come to the surface. We're ready for the raising of consciousness that knowing this information will provide and then the freedom of choice that comes with that. If you, if you are completely unaware that you're in the cage and you, that's all you, that you know, well then that is how it is. But now you know we're being offered here a little lifting of that cage door, a little bit of freedom, a little bit of knowing what we didn't know before. And now we have choice where we didn't really have choice before, not at a conscious level. Uh, so I thought that was just really cool. Um, they said here, we as Melchizedek and all of the entities and energies who support humanity's growth and evolution have propped up the cage door for you. There is never a wrong choice or a bad choice when it comes to these things. But know that you do have a choice, dear ones. This is the critical first step, the raising of consciousness the raising of awareness, that there is another possibility for you. And it's quite different from what you've known. Yeah. All right. They said here, we attempt through this text to give you a bit of a guidebook, some basic instructions, so that you may get a taste for where you're headed and what might be possible there. It's raising your consciousness and your awareness to possibilities you never knew existed. They said this, my friends, friends constitute a paradigm shift, which we know, but there's going to be a lot of people here who hopefully will come into contact with this information who maybe are very new to it and don't know it. You know, they don't understand this. Um, all right. And they also talked about this text being so much more than the words that this is an energetic exchange going on on many levels and to be patient with yourselves as you read the text, um, to, you know, be patient, to be trusting, you know, it's going to require a bunch of trust, you know, as people kind of go on this journey through this text. Um, and they said here, this body of work also represents a major turning point for a species who has become increasingly agitated and incensed, feeling that cage around them, but not fully understanding its properties or where it came from, who put you there, and why it exists in the first place. Is that not so very true? <laughs> in spades, right? So again, team, this is why our light's so important. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap it up at that point here. <laughs> uh, thanks again for being here. Um, I certainly will share more of this book as it is revealed to me uh, every day. And uh, I'm here for you if you need me. Let me know if I can help you in any way, if I can be of service. All right, team. I hope you're doing well. I love you guys. I love each and every one of you. Have an amazing day, night, wherever you're at in the world. Mwah.